Hi guys, yes, ask a Carlos Irtate to another episode of Dimitro's Dishes. Today we are making Milo Pitakia. Basically, that translates to little me little mini uh, apple pies that are gonna be wrapped in phyllo, flaky, buttery, sweet, delicious. They're gonna have all the flavors of fall. And the best part about this recipe, other than it's delicious, of course, is that it makes a very big batch and you don't have to make all of them because these are little individual little pies and you can just freeze them. They stay fresh in the freezer for a month, a month and a half. They're definitely not gonna last that long, not this time of year. There's nothing better than the smell of something apple-ish with cinnamon baking in the oven. Let's get started making these because I just can't wait to share this recipe with you. So since this is these are little mini apple pies. We are gonna start with lots of apple pies. Like I said, this makes a very big batch, so if you, if you don't wanna make all of it, cut the um, ingredients in half. Uh, you can use between nine to 10 or eight to 10 apples in this. Use your favorite apples. Really good apples for baking are the Granny Smith, you know, the little green apples, uh, gala apples, are they called gala, are they called gala, <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean. But whatever apples are your favorite, go ahead and use those. You could even use a combination of apples. It's up to you. The other day um, when I made this, I like to have apple pie filling in my refrigerator pretty much all uh, season long because you can just quickly whip up delicious desserts in no time. And I like to use um, the apples that are kind of going bad um, in my refrigerator to make the apple pie filling. So you're gonna peel them, and I peeled a bunch over there and I put them in uh, lemon water, just cold water with one um, half of a lemon and I squeeze the juice of it, out of it. And uh, you're just gonna wanna leave them in there so they don't turn brown. It's not a necessary step, but since I had to prepare the ingredients so that way the video goes smoothly, that's the reason I did it. Otherwise, you're gonna cook the apples anyway and the sauce is kind of brown, so you don't have to do that. Anyway, take the core out. And I love this filling because you can make it, like I said, ahead of time, keep it refrigerated, and then you can just pour this into some pie crust, put it into some puff pastry, some layers of phyllo, and you could just bake it and have a dessert ready in no time. It's great if you're having last minute guests over. And I'm just gonna cut the apple into cubes because um, they look better when the dessert is small like this. So I'm gonna continue cutting up my apples and then we're gonna move on to the next step. You just wanna make sure that you have phyllo thawed out the night before. Um, I went over this so many times. If you watch the show, you already know. You thaw it out in the refrigerator, leave it in its packaging, take it out in the morning um, when you know you're gonna use it, and let it sit at room temperature until you're ready, an hour, two hours. Um, the, the more um, room temperature it is, the easier it's gonna be to work with. Okay, so the apples are all cut up. I have a stick of butter that's four ounces. Um, I'll put the gram measurements on the blog, and it melted in here. I like to use um, salted butter for this just because it adds more flavor and then I just skip the salt but I was out so I just use a stick of unsalted butter I think unsalted butter is what the recipe calls for anyway you just put it in there and um, if your butter in the country that you're in if the butter is too salty just use unsalted butter it makes it simpler okay you put the apples in there and the lemon water did absolutely nothing because they turned brown anyway so totally skip that step I'm gonna season with a little bit of salt. Desserts do need some salt, it really brings out the flavors. And then I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar and a heaping tablespoon of ground cinnamon. Then I have four and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. And that is, I wrote it down because <laughs> I measured, 47 grams. Get all that cornstarch out. And then we need a cup of brown sugar, but my cup doesn't fit in here, so I'll use a third cup and put three of these babies, which equals one cup. Light brown sugar is best. Now, if you don't have light brown sugar and all you have is dark brown sugar, use that. Don't go running out um, to the store just to get one ingredient. I don't recommend that. And then give everything a mix. Cook this over medium heat. Um, just until the sugar and everything melts, the apples are gonna release their juices and create a sauce. 
And the second it starts to boil, you're gonna see that it's gonna thicken fairly quickly. So take it off of the heat and then just stir in a uh, half a cup of heavy whipping cream. It's gonna help make a beautiful caramel-like sauce. And then what you're gonna wanna do is let it cool completely before you go to work with it. So this is great, like I said, to have on hand. You can make this a day before. If you're making it the same day, then let it sit for at least an hour, hour and a half, or until it comes to room temperature. Okay, so the apple pie filling is ready and it should look like this. The, the sauce should be nice and thick and then you add the heavy whipping cream. Now, it all depends on your apples and how much liquid they're going to release and all that fun stuff. So that, that depends on how much heavy cream you're going to add. If the sauce is super thick, you could add half a cup or even three quarters of a cup. If it's already on the thinner side, you can just add a quarter of a cup. If the sauce is too thin and you're seeing that a minute has passed and it's still boiling, Take it off of the heat. You don't want the apples to melt. And then in a, in a little cup or in a little glass, put one to two teaspoons of cornstarch in it and dilute it with some uh, water. Once it's completely diluted, pour it into the pan, return it back to the heat, and then it's going to help it thicken much faster. If you're going to wait for the sauce to thicken, the apples might turn into applesauce, and you don't want that. You really want them to hold their texture. Now, mix everything really well. Oh, my God, this smells so good, you guys. I can just eat it as is just the way it is right now but i'm going to set it aside you want it to cool completely before you work with it otherwise it's not going to be possible to work with burning hot apple pie filling in the meantime i'm just going to tidy up a little bit and uh, then we'll move on to the next step okay so the filling has cooled down to room temperature and it's still nice and thick i'm just going to set it aside and get the phyllo ready so this phyllo this particular brand that i bought uh, packages it. It's one pound of phyllo, but it packages it into two little uh, packages like this. So I'm going to work with one at a time. Most of the time, the phyllo that you buy at the grocery store comes in one long roll of, of puff pastry, I was going to say, of phyllo. So those, you can cut them even a little bit bigger. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to cut them into four inch squares. You can cut these up to six inch squares if you want them a little bit bigger. But four inches is what this one allows for. So that's what I'm going to do, four inches. And I have some unsalted butter ready over here that I've melted. This is three sticks of unsalted butter and I melted them. All of the measurements are gonna be on the website. So don't worry about it, it's gonna be listed. So you wanna get these as even as possible. And since this feel right here is a little bit more than, it's more, it's closer to like 13 inches. Let's use this. It's just going to be a little bit bigger than four inch squares, but they're going to be even. That's what matters. There we go. And we're just going to make put these on top of each other so we have one stack of squares now you want to make sure that you have baking trays that are lined with parchment paper you're going to need about three of them keep everything ready you want your area to be just everything for everything to be nice and neat now i'm just going to take one layer at a time and i'm going to drizzle some butter in between each layer and i'm going to make little stacks of six layers of phyllo You want to make sure you get them, get the uh, butter around the edges. You'll see why once you start forming them. The top layer does not need any uh, butter on it. And make these first, so that way everything moves kind of like an assembly line. As many as you can fit on your board or on your work surface, go ahead and do this step first. Then you can fill them afterwards all together and just transfer them onto the baking tray. Six. So if you get seven or eight layers, that's fine. I wasn't really counting. I think that was three. Four. And if they're stuck together, don't worry about it too much. Here's the second stack. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I have about six of them done or seven, however many fit on this board. Next, just take a heaping tablespoon of the apple pie filling. 
and put it in the center of each one of the little stacks of buttered phyllo. Kind of make like a little mound of it. It's going to look prettier once everything bakes. Now, if you want, this is optional. You can, add, you can top them with some raisins, cranberries, dried cherries, whatever your favorite dried fruit is. And then on top of that, I like to put some walnuts. I, I make them both ways. I make some plain and some with the dried fruit and nut because some people like them and some people don't. It's like that. And then you're gonna take the corners and fold them in towards the center. And if it's not sticking, go ahead and brush some butter, even though they're gonna get butter brushed on them inside the tray too. Let me go in there, hold it together. They are gonna open up a little bit during the baking process. And then go ahead and transfer them to the baking tray. Now, the ones that are opening up, that means that there isn't enough butter in between the layers towards the edges of the pastries. And you could just fix that once you butter them up in a little bit. Once you brush them with butter, they'll be perfectly fine. And they open up naturally a little bit in the oven, so they don't have to be perfect. These are rustic little pastries, which is what's beautiful about them too. They, they're not made in a factory. You don't have a machine cutting these out and doing the work for you. So they're not gonna be totally perfect, but that's, there's beauty in that, right? Then just go ahead and brush them all with the melted butter. You're gonna see that the layers that opened up, they'll stick back together. I also like to sprinkle the tops with a little bit of granulated sugar. It gives it a little bit of crunch, a little bit of shine, a little hint of sweetness. And then if you're baking these off right away, you wanna preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, put them, in, put them in the oven and let them bake for about 25, 30 minutes or until they're nice and golden all around. Take them out and let them sit until they get to room temperature a little bit. You can serve them piping hot too if you want, but I prefer them when they're at room temperature. Hit them with a dusting of powdered sugar, also known as confectioner sugar. If you're, I'm gonna continue making these because I still have quite a few to make. And then I'm gonna freeze some, I'm gonna bake some. You can freeze them just at this point as well. You don't have to bake them off. If there's just two of you, you can just put four on a little baking tray and bake them. Who eats one, right? <laughs> and then freeze the rest. Once you butter them, put them on the tray and everything, put them in the freezer. Once they're set and frozen solid, either transfer them to freezer safe bags or a freezer safe uh, storage container, or you can wrap the trays up tightly with plastic wrap and they will keep fresh in there for a month or two, maybe even more. I've never tried it because they don't last longer than two weeks in this house. I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out of the oven. So the little mini apple pies, the milopitake, are ready. I made two trays. The first tray baked for 25 minutes and it's nice and golden and beautiful. The second tray, I kind of forgot about it for the last few minutes. So it did get a little bit more golden brown than I would have liked. It's still gonna taste delicious. They did not burn, but they are beautiful. If you're baking them uh, frozen, take them straight out of the freezer. You don't have to do anything to them and just put them in a preheated 350 degree oven. And as soon as they reach a golden brown color, it all depends on your oven how long that's gonna take. But, but check them at the 20 minute mark just so that way you can gauge it. Then as soon as they're golden brown, take them out and serve them, make some coffee, make some tea, call some friends over. If this is a little too labor intensive for you and you don't wanna go through making so many of this shape, this little beautiful, what do you call them? They're like little parcels, they're so pretty. This little square shape. You can make little triangles like I did. You can put this all into some layered um, and buttered 
phyllo sheets and roll it up into a strudel. I've made an apple strudel in the past and I'll link the video, it's kind of old, but it's really simple to make a strudel. But little turnovers are fine too, like little uh, triangle shaped turnovers. You can make them into little rolls, whatever you wish. But these are just so pretty. They're perfect for the holidays if you're looking for a nice Thanksgiving dessert. You can make this two weeks before your party, your get together, and then just uh, bake them straight out of the freezer. What could be easier than that? They should be very crispy. Let's cut into one. Hear that? That is what you want to hear. And now it's time to, for the best part, the taste test. The best. The flaky puff, I keep saying puff pastry. You can make these with puff pastry if you want to take a little shortcut. Basically cut it into squares and do the same thing. You just skip the buttering part. You don't have to butter them. But the flaky phyllo just melts in your mouth. That filling is the best apple pie filling that I've ever had. It is the only filling I use to make anything that's apple flavor during the holidays. It's my apple pie filling. It's what I use to make these little milopitakia. The first time I had these, was with my cousin Aphrodite when I was in Greece this summer at a cute little cafe in Kanya. It's kind of off the beaten path. It's not on the main road. It's called Obranas. If you ever go to Crete, to Kanya, and you want to have the best coffee with amazing desserts, definitely visit them. And I had this with her the day before I was leaving for my summer vacation. And I thought, wow, I have to make the, reinvent it. And I thought, wow, let me just test this recipe and share it with you guys because it's just too good to keep to myself. I forgot to dust them with powdered sugar, but you can go ahead and do that. It makes them look extra pretty and fancy. The exact measurements are on the website, DemetrisDishes.com. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I will see you back here very soon with another recipe. Yes, us.